Okay. <clears throat> What's up, guys, and welcome to Dem Boys, a Dallas Cowboys fan podcast. I'm Joe Valle, and I'm here with my co-host, Shane Carter. What's up, guys? What's up, Shane? How you doing? I'm doing good. Doing, I'm down in Austin right now. I know you're up on uh, – are you back in Pass? You're still in Dallas. No, I'm still in Dallas. I'm still in Dallas. Um, so oh, so if you haven't so heard so of us – yeah, so if you haven't heard of us, Dem Boys is a weekly uh, Dallas Cowboys fan podcast. It ha- it's, there hasn't been a lot of news, so we've kind of done a monthly thing. But when, once the season starts, we're going to keep it a weekly thing. Um, and this podcast is dedicated to news and rumors on all things America's team. Um, also, real quick, a special thanks to my uh, to my good friend Julio, Julio Carrillo um, for our awesome intro and outro. You can check him out on Facebook, at Julio Carrillo uh, Music on Facebook and YouTube. So go check him out. Thank you, Julio. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. I like it. Um, so we're going to start off with, it's not really breaking news, but it's the biggest news surrounding the Cowboys right now. It's our star linebacker, Rolando McClain, could not stay off the weed, and he is suspended. For how long? We don't know. Is it is it for the whole season right now, I guess, uh, indefinitely? I think, I think it's four games. Four games? Okay. Do you think he can get it lowered? I doubt it. No, they can't because he's already, uh, he's, he's, I think there's like a second conviction, and plus I think he already admitted guilt to it. Yeah. So, so I think he's gonna have. I think he's already accepted fault, and the Cowboys are gonna be without him for the first four games, which is too bad because he was, he was more of a key player on on, on defense that was already lagging in production. Yeah, man. Um, I hate it. Like, why not? you're a, you're a professional football player that gets paid millions of dollars. I guess what he's getting the minimum though, right? Sounds about right. Yeah, but still, he's getting thousands of dollars to play for pe- professional football. Can you not? smoke marijuana just for like a couple of years after that you can do whatever you want like we can actually win a super bowl we, we don't have an amazing defense but it's pretty good and with him sean lee and anthony hitchens um that, what i i think that could have been like top three linebacking core in the league don't you think i think the packers and the patriots last year proved that you don't need an elite defense like the seahawks but you need a serviceable defense and a good offense and you can make it far in the playoffs, maybe even with the Super Bowl. The Cowboys definitely had a serviceable defense and a, ten, and a fantastic offense. Now DeMarco Murray leaving is big, but we'll get into, that's 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 another issue for another day. But Rolando, yeah. McCl- but Rolando McClain was one of the biggest, if not the biggest piece of the returning starters on defense. And you're right that the Cowboys fans and the Cowboys, everybody, is expecting a Super Bowl run. And Rolando was, was a big part of that. And not having him for the first four games is going to hurt. Oh, yeah. I mean, he was the heart and soul of the defense last year. Um, I mean, hopefully Sean Lee stays healthy because if not, man, we're going to be super thin. Yeah, I know that uh, – I know there have been a couple names being tossed around who could replace him. I know uh, Jasper Brinkley has probably been the favorite because he's, uh, he's got veteran leadership. He's got experience out there. Yeah. I, also, I also like that guy uh, from Arizona State, the uh, Damian Wilson kid, because he kind of like Hitchens. They're both about 6'1", 240, 245, give or take. Mm-hmm. And the best part about them is if you look at Hitchens, you look at Sean Lee, you look at Damian Wilson, all three of those guys have one thing in common. They're athletic linebackers with position flexibility. And what that means is that you are not designated in one spot that you can play anywhere on the field. Yeah. Do you – uh, uh, Continue. And, when, and uh, there's, so many, there's so many players on that, on that defense that have position flexibility because they need it. I mean, maybe a few players only know only know one position, but if you look at guys like uh, I mean, guys like um, Orlando Scandrick who can play the inside and outside corner, yeah. Got, got guys like uh, see who can play tackle and and end. We got Sean Lee who knows all three backer positions as well as Hitchens. Mm-hmm. Having position flexibility is key, especially in today's NFL when injuries are more and more prevalent. So when we lost one of our best players. And it was and it was over something that he could control. That's, that's yeah. It's fr- it's frustrating, man. Um, I don't know. Like it's something that you know you can't do. I know, like this is a big move in on trying to legalize it, but you signed a contract, and if your job, you know, prevents you from doing it, just don't do it. Like I don't see how it's such a big deal. Um, I don't know. I that that's something for 
for an, that's a talk for another day. If you, um, offer, if you offered me league minimum and told me all I had to do was not smoke weed, right? I like, can do that. Just play football. You're an athletic freak. Just don't smoke weed. That's the one thing you can't do. Well, I mean, there's a lot of things you can't do, but because the first four games, none, none, none of them are a cakewalk. I well, mean, no. I mean, two of them are two of them are rivals, and two of them are against the NFC South, which we all mm. know the, the NFC South was bad last year, but. The NFC South did have a lot of offense. Yeah, but it is nice to have them there, you know. Like, of course it is. Um, do you regret? Do you? Do, uh, or are you sad that we lost Bruce Carter now? I lost Bruce Carter even before this happened because I thought last year he kind of stepped up to what he could have to what he could have and should have been playing from from the beginning. Yeah. He he wasn't fantastic, but he was athletic and he was a huge part of of that defensive turnaround. Mm-hmm. You look, you look, All right. Let me show you something, uh, Joe. What's up? The first four games are big ones because the first one is prime time season opener against the Giants in Dallas. Then they then they go to Philly, and then they're home against Atlanta, which is always tough because Atlanta Atlanta just got one of the best offenses in the league. And then you got at New Orleans, and New Orleans to me is kind of like Seattle with it has the one of the better home field advantages in the NFL. Yeah. And, and the Rolando's uh, season season premiere would come against the Patriots in Week Five. Tom Brady comes back. Well, I think I think he's out for that game because they have an early bye week. I'm not mistaken. Uh, okay. Um, all right. Anyways, um, so this podcast talks about the Cowboys, but we also talk about stuff that I guess affects the Cowboys. So, in other news, over the Fourth of July weekend. A New York Giant by the name of Jason Pierre-Paul was playing with fireworks. Who? And Jason Pierre-Paul. Never, never, Pierre. heard, never heard of the guy. Never heard of him. Nope. He's he's like he's like a like a Michael Strahan light, mm, like nope. super light, like very light, like no fizz at all. I have no idea um, what you're talking about. <laughs> anyways, he was playing with fireworks. The full story isn't really clear yet, but he kind of blew up his finger and had to had to get it amputated. Okay, you say play with fireworks. I already know where you're going with that. So what? <laughs> when I think uh, of, when I think of that, I think of the episode of Family Guy where Peter tried light, lighting all those firecrackers at once, <laughs> and he started talking instead of throwing the firecrackers, and it blew his fingers off. Uh, and so I'm starting to think maybe we should change the name to Jason Peter Griffin or something like that, because <laughs> because that was pretty stupid of him. And there's been some funny pictures. Um, so how how much do you think this affects the Giants? I mean, I've I heard that they pulled their offer. Well, I'm not sure how close they were to giving an offer in the first place. I know that at one time there was an offer set, but Jason Pierre-Paul was adamant and that he wanted more money. Yeah. And you and I both know his production had been kind of up, up and down for, for some for some time. I know his yeah. uh, his best season came in uh, 2011. He had that 16 sacks or 16 or 17 sacks, and then he kind of like me- meagered out for two seasons. Last year he kind of played more like the old JPP. He had about 12, 13 sacks. He was, he was a much more – like he used to, like he used to be. But the problem was, is that he was never a constant elite pass rusher. He had he had two really really good seasons, and it has been a two time Pro Bowler. But I think the reason that that they may be a little sketch, uh, sketchy, or I guess for lack of a better word, cautious about giving yeah. him a contract extension is because you don't know what you're going to get from this guy. Well, yeah, I mean, without a finger, you don't really know um, how he could perform anymore. I mean, I know he's. He's a, he's a, um, a defensive lineman, so does he really use it that much? I mean, he, he could just, like, wrap it up and give him I mean, a club like how Sean Lee used it, remember? Just, like, whack people. But you, you got to get around the linemen, so you have to grab them at, at least a little bit. Okay, I play defensive line. I can tell you right now that your hands are, are some of your best weapons because many times you're going against a guy on the offensive line who is, who's going to go at you at full force on the run. Yeah. And, on, and on the pass block, you, you need to be able to use your hands to get around him. Now, you got to cheat a little bit, right? Now maybe, now, it's a, now it's a finger, which in and of itself isn't as, isn't as bad as if he cut his own hand off. Yeah, but, but it's but an it, index finger. That's an, like your main finger. That, that, that is, that's, yes. I, I, don't, I don't know if it will it'll affect it. I don't think a finger is going to affect his production, but if I had to put a finger on it, I would say something <laughs> along the line. I would say that that whatever his uh, sack total will be next year, it would have been that regardless if he had 10 fingers or four. I think so. What about his uh, his stance? Is he going to have to like be on the left side or the right side like all the time? He's going to fall over. He doesn't have a finger. 
<laughs> well, the thing with well, the thing with that is that <laughs> <laughs> that's a that, that was a nice joke. It was on his right hand, and, yeah, and that and he is right-handed, so obviously, so obviously his stance will have to change a little bit. Yeah, he, I guess, now I guess he can, now if he wanted to, he can, he can go from from a light stance or or even switch uh or even switch to the left hand if he wanted to. Yeah, but he will have to adjust just at least for that at least for that sake. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, even though he is a bitter rival and an enemy, uh, good luck to you, Pierre Paul. Uh, I hate seeing players get hurt. Um, although it, it was kind of stupid of you to hold a firework and let it blow up in your hand. Yeah, it seems, uh, it seems like the common theme of today is that people are making mistakes that they could have avoided. Yeah, definitely smoking weed when you're not supposed to. Blowing your blowing fingers a off. Firework and yeah, I mean. Same just, thing. Just, Put it in a bottle and light it. Don't, you don't have to hold the, the blackjack in your hand to just to look like a man. You're already or just, a big man. Or you, or you can do what I used to do and just give it to my brother and then say, hold this for a minute for a second. <laughs> All right. So next up, uh, back to the Cowboys. Um, the NFL's top 100 players list that is voted by the NFL players has mm -hmm. finished. Um, two notables are Tony Romo came in at 34, right. and he ranked eighth best quarterback in the league. And he was behind Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Peyton Manning, Drew Brees, Ben Roethlisberger, Andrew Luck, and Russell Wilson. And that is not in the correct order. I do believe Aaron Rodgers was number two overall, like everything. And J.J. Watt came out as number one. Um, other than that, I don't really know the order. Um, do you agree with him being the eighth best quarterback behind those guys? Um, real quick before you um, talk about it. I think it's fine other than Russell Wilson. Or I'd even put him uh, over Andrew Luck just on because this is based on last year. So I'd put him above Andrew and above Russell. Everyone else, fine. Like put him ahead. Mm. This is tough because I mean he was definitely a top ten quarterback, but honestly, last year he was probably a top three. Yeah, he it was at, his best year he had, ever. He had the best completion percentage and one of the best QBRs in the entire league. Yeah. Second, second only to Aaron Rodgers. And he had a now Peyton Manning is Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. They're both they're going to be revered as some of the best until they retire. So you can't really you can't really fight that. Russell Wilson he's he's been dominant since he since he got out, since he got out of college. So I don't necessarily have a problem with that. I, I guess I guess I see where they're going with that because they're talking about, talk about top players. That means this one's more dangerous than that guy. And Russell Wilson has that run factor, and the fact that he doesn't get hurt, he's constantly in there. Danger, Russ. Yeah, yeah, it, may, it makes him dangerous, and and Andrew, and Andrew Luck the same thing. I did, however, think that he had a, he was better than uh, Drew Brees. I thought Drew Brees. Yeah, Drew, I thought Drew Brees. I mean, the Saints kind of suck, so. I thought Drew Brees uh, had a had a lagging season, but that's not necessarily not necessarily all his fault, though. Yeah. I thought I thought, I'm not, I'm, I, thought Roman, I thought Tony Romo I thought Tony Romo deserved top twenty five at least, but yeah. but that's because I thought he was one of the top three quarterbacks. But yeah. I do I do see why maybe those other seven were ahead of him. Do you think the players uh, took DeMarco Murray's success into account that maybe the threat of Murray caused Romo to have such a good year? Because Murray uh, ended up being the number one running back, and he came out, I think he was four overall or something like that. I know he was the best back. Well, he was definitely – well, he was definitely the best running back last year. There's no question about that. He rushed him almost 2,000 yards. And, yeah, I mean, of course you have to consider that, but people might also consider DeMarco Murray's success was only successful because of the offensive line, and maybe the offensive line wasn't ranked high enough. Yeah, well uh... – so, so I don't think I don't think it's really fair to credit one person's success for another because if that's the case, then Ben Roethlisberger shouldn't be ranked that high because of Le'Veon Bell. Yeah. Um, all right, and then the other uh, notable cowboy was Des Bryant. He came in ranked as number 15 overall. Mm -hmm. Ahead of him was Calvin Johnson as the top uh, receiver. Number two receiver was Antonio Brown, and number three was Julio Jones. I am very upset about this. Um, sure, put Calvin as number one. I mean, you can just do, do, do it every year. But Des had a great year. Put him at number two. Or, I mean, fine, give it to Antonio Brown. But Julio Jones, really? See, Julio Jones had a comeback year after being out for the after, after, after most season last year, and he definitely deserved to be one of the top five receivers. He was definitely a star, and he's been a yeah. star receiver since coming to the league. But I thought Dez was the second best receiver only to Antonio Bryant, who was the best receiver in the league. In fact, right now you might say he's the best overall. 
Now, Megatron is the, is, has been considered the most dangerous receiver for some time, and he actually had a worse season last year. Gold, Golden Tate, his teammate, actually had a better season, better season than he did, but Mount Megatron is still considered and revered as the best receiver in the league. Yeah, with, I guess that's why. With, with, so even, despite having despite having lagging numbers. Yeah. So I so I guess I understand that, but I thought he's I thought Dez was definitely top two, even top three. Yeah. Man, do you think uh, AJ Green got snubbed out of that? Uh, not necessarily because well, he's he's def. I think if you look rank every single receiver, he, AJ Green should be a top five receiver. But if you're talking about like amongst those four, those four were still better than AJ was. Yeah. And that's not necessarily and that's not necessarily his fault. It just yeah. kind of it just kind of goes season by season. I don't know. And, if it was me, I'd go Calvin, Dez, Antonio Brown, uh, AJ, Julio. That's what I'd do. I, I would have thrown Jordy Nelson in there, but Jordy Nelson too. But he's got Aaron Rodgers. Okay, well, this goes back to the whole you can't like take away one per- one person's success from another. True, but very true, saying. very true. But because all all four of those receivers have four good quarterbacks. Yeah. All right, so um, we're gonna try out this new segment. It's called "Who You Got." I'm gonna ask Shane a question, and I'm gonna and he's pretty much gonna answer on who he's got. It's uh, sometimes it'll be um, between two teams, who's gonna win. Sometimes it's gonna be a like a position battle. And that's what we're doing this week. So if only four backs make the roster, and that's including running backs, fullbacks, um, which four players will make the team in your opinion? Well, I think the obvious one is Joseph Randall because he's the has the most upside amongst the running backs, and he's been in the system, and people kind of expect him to be a shorter version of DeMarco Murray. Maybe not as big, but definitely faster. Yeah, in the, uh, I think you throw in I think you throw in Lance Dunbar, who's sort of the Cowboys prototype of Darren McFadden. He hasn't hurt and he hasn't really had the uh, breakout that everyone has had has hoped that he could be. But people are expecting a lot from this guy this year. But so, so I think he uh, he also makes the roster. You know, Darren McFadden uh, would would be considered in there also because he's, he has a three year deal with the Cowboys, and I think they want him to be the big the big back, the big power back that they don't have anymore. Mm-hmm. And a lot, and a lot of people like Ryan Williams because last year we did in the preseason. But the problem with that is because when you have three running backs, you would probably need a fullback in there also. And I think, unfortunately, Ryan Williams, I don't think he makes the cut. And I think they go with the fullback to make the fourth one, whether, whether it's Jed Collins or Tyler Klutz or whoever. So I got those, I got those three tailbacks and a fullback. I like that. Um, I'll start off with Randall because that's kind of like a shoe in. Um, we're kind of relying on him to be the guy, and I hope I hope it works out. Right. Um, after that, I'm gonna go with Klutz because I think the team needs a fullback. I mean, okay, we, well, we don't need one, but because we don't it have helps. a back, yeah, because we don't have a back like Demarco, I think it'll help uh, Randall uh, move into you know the starting role and help him out a little bit. Right. Even though the offensive line is going to have massive holes, um, having a fullback is going to help him out a lot. Um, yeah, the that next a, that offensive line helps, but having a fullback helps even more. Yeah, the next two, I, I'm really like really confused on who to pick. Um, if I had to pick one, it would. I mean, it has to be uh, uh, Darren McFadden. Like we got mm-hmm. him, we just got to go with him and see what he's got. Um, the reason I'm scared is because I don't think he's going to be healthy. I, I, I don't see him doing anything. Um, but we'll see what happens. Um, and then my next one, it's actually someone that's not on the team. If I had to pick someone on the team, it's going to be Lance Seastruck. I think, I think the kids got something, even though I was, I'm high on my boy, Lance Dunbar. I think Seastruck's got something. See, I saw, Um, I saw Lance Seastruck play when he was back at Temple High School. Yeah, and that and that dude was an absolute beast. I mean, with the Baylor, he played like a beast. I would like to. I agree. I like the. I would like the Cowboys to give him a fair shot at making the roster because of the huge upside he has. The problem is that there's other running backs on that team that are more NFL experienced and are already more familiar with the system. That kind of works against him. But yeah. maybe, but maybe he goes the same route as Aaron Foster, and we have the next Aaron Foster on our team for all we know. Oh, that'd be insane, man. Um, so then there's this other one. Um, and I heard a rumor while back. I've been wanting to talk about it. Okay. What if we trade for Fred Jackson? 
Oh my God! They they want they want to bring they want to bring Fred Jackson back to Dallas. Yeah. yeah. I think he would love to come back home, but the pro, but and the thing with him is, they already have they already have Lashawn McCoy, so they're not they're not desperate for anything as far as running back goes. Yeah, that's why that's why they traded but, to, traded to us. And he, but, he, he, but he's the oldest running back in the league. He's well, still good. Well, what do we get? What do we get? What do we give him? What do we give for him? A pick? A pick or a if running back is the only thing that's missing, and Fred Jackson is better than all these guys, then I mean, what might as well? Forget Fred Jackson. Steven Steven Jackson is, is still available. Grab him. <laughs> yeah, you could do that too, I guess. Um, do you, I don't. Do you think he's going to start in Atlanta? No, Steven Jackson's a free agent. He's not. He's, he's a not free Atlanta. agent. I thought he was still in Atlanta. No, he's gone. Oh, well, that's, that's not bad. I don't know. I I just saw I saw a rumor about Fred Jackson, and it got me excited. Um, I, I guess I, would, I guess, I guess, I, guess I, would, I guess I would like to see it just because you like you like bringing some of those uh, some of those old school type of type of players back and he and he's an old school downhill type runner yeah and just like DeMar. whereas like the NFL is kind of switching to more like this this like slash and dash type running backs with Lashawn McCoy yeah and these smaller quick outside receivers like Antonio Brown and Odell Beckham yeah. but I do like the old school big big guys so I guess that'd be cool. Okay. Okay. It's a pretty good, pretty good roster. Yours or mine. I like them both. Mm-hmm. Um, one last question before we wrap up. Um, how do you think Randall's going to handle the workload? Um, I, I think maybe we should have someone else start on first and second down and make use him as a third down back. I think by week four he'll be the starter. I think by week week like one, like definite two, starter, like gets all the carries. Week he might be starting one, two, and three, but I think he'll be the absolute starter by week four. But as in, like he's the main guy. Week one, two, and three, we're gonna, we'll probably switch up the, who uh, who the guy's gonna be. But by week three, they'll figure it out. Okay, this guy is the guy. And you think week, we're gonna? You think we're gonna pull like a, a a Patriots and just have like random running backs in? We don't. We don't have that kind of depth that they do. And plus, Belichick can take anybody off the street and make them into a serviceable <laughs> player. Yeah. Yeah, you can get Legarry Blunt and score like five touchdowns in one round. I mean, game. He, he he puts he puts Julian Allen at quarterback and it works. No, but we don't have anybody <laughs> like that on the team or at least on the coaching staff. I yeah. think I think that Joseph Randall, if he's the guy everyone expects him to be, and I expect him to be that guy also. He's fast, by week, man. By week four, I expect him to be the back because yeah. cause you look at you look at him, he's got he's got the speed. He's not very big, but to me, he's kind of like that new type of running back I'm telling I'm told you about, kind of like a yeah. Lashawn McCoy type. I'm not saying he's the next LaShawn McCoy. Oh, no, no. But, I don't think but, he has the lateral speed. But he's he's definitely fits, got, he fits the mold. He's got the vertical speed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with those holes, you just got to, you know, take five, like three steps and you're already four yards down the field. So, right. Yeah. So, all right. So that'll wrap it up for this week. It's going to have a short episode. There's not much to talk about, but uh, we'll keep on doing it. Uh, try and keep it more of a weekly thing. So, thanks, thanks for tuning in to the Dem Boys podcast. This is the Dallas Cowboys fan podcast. Um, I'm Joe Ovaya. That's Shane Carter. Uh, thanks for joining us. Fo- make sure to follow us on Twitter at Dem Boys Podcast. That's D M B O Y Z Podcast. And, and we like our it, Facebook. We spelled it correctly. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We Dem Boys. All right. So you guys have a great day and go Cowboys. Yep. Yeah.